What's up everybody? Today I'm going to talk uh, quickly about how to make a ridgeline plot. I'm going to be using some data that I scraped from uh, timeandweather.com and it is the daily uh, highs and low temperatures from Birmingham, Alabama um, during 2019. So it's data for every single day across the year 2009 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a ridgeline plot that shows um, while the distribution of these these average high temperatures um, for each month of the year and so I hope you enjoy alright so we're gonna start um, just by loading in the libraries that we'll be using I'm using tidyverse to clean up the data a bit and then we will use ggplot2 and ggjoy uh, to actually plot okay so let's go ahead and load in the data and I'll give you a glimpse of it just to see what it is so again, we've got the day of the week over here, and then we've got the date. You can see it just goes continuously all the way through each day of the year. And then we've got a bunch of different temperatures. So we've got temp low one, time one, and temp high one. And it's set up like this because the way that I scraped it, I pulled off uh, the, the average high and low um, for each of the four time points that they included on the site, which was 12 a.m., 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. Um, so they had those for each day, and so I grabbed those. I'm gonna be using um, these 12 p.m. temperatures, so temp high 3 is what I'm going to be using. Okay, so let's hop into this. The first thing that we're going to need to do is actually define um, each month. So if we go back in there and we look at the date, it's actually January 1, January 2. I really just need it to say January. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, to do that, we are going to go ahead and change uh, date to a character so that we can pull out, we could substring it. Um, so as character, my data, date. So we'll change it to a character. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say my data, we're gonna create a new column called month. And we're gonna say uh, sub string. And we're gonna call in here my data, date. And we're gonna call um, starting at two, going to four. So let's go in and make sure that that happened. Yeah, there you go. So now we've got this new column called month and it's all of these, but you'll see it's still a, uh, a data type character. So we need to change that back to a factor for these plots. So we're gonna say month and then we're gonna say as factor and then we will say uh, my data month go up this way okay so now we've got that the next thing that we want to make sure is that our um, the temperature that we're going to be using which is again this temp high 3 is a numeric and as you can see it's not it's actually a factor and so we're going to go ahead and change that to a numeric so we'll say my data temp high 3 and we'll say as numeric and then inside of this actually what we're going to do to make sure that this pulls it in appropriately because it's a factor now we're going to convert it to a character before we convert it to a numeric uh, sometimes R treats those factors a little bit differently and um, it won't convert the number exactly okay so uh, my data temp high three all right so let's go ahead and run that and that's just saying that some NAs were introduced by coercion that is because we've got a few days where there's some missing data um, but if I go back in here and just check out temp high 3, you can see it's now data type numeric, and um, we've got our actual numbers there. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do before we actually plot this is um, we have to reorder our factors uh, for the month that we just created. Um, so if I go ahead and come down here into our console, let me expand this a bit so we can see it. Um, let me empty it. So if I, if I come down here into, into uh, our console and I say um, levels my data month, and we look at this, oh, that says uh, null. Is it not data type factor? Did we not run that? Oh, it's still saying it's a character. Maybe we uh, didn't run that one there. All right, so let's try this now. So now it's coming up and you can see what, it, what R does automatically is it puts those factors as, as leveled in numerical, uh, in alphabetical order um, if they're strings. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this so that we have um, you know the actual order of the months. So let's bring this back down a bit, and then I will come down here, and I'm going to say uh, my data month, um, and then we'll say factor. Oops. And then inside of factor, we're going to call in what we want to change. So we'll say my data. We'll call in our month. And then we're actually going to call in our levels in the order that we want to put them. So we're going to say levels is equal to, we'll put these in squiggly brackets. Oops, actually, no, we won't. What we'll do is, ah, come on, need a better keyboard here. C, and then we're actually just going to put in um, what we need here. So we're going to say Jan, Feb, March. Let's go ahead and copy this. Paste it. So that'll be January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. All right, so then we can run that. Oop. Argument 13 is empty. Oh, got to get rid of that last comma there. All right, so we can run that. Let's go back in. It's really not going to change anything in here, um, but it does change uh, the order of these. So if we come back down here into the console and do what we did before, where we called in uh, levels, and then we say my data month. Now you can see it's actually in the order that we want them. Okay, so now we can actually plot. So uh, we let's give ourselves some room here, and we'll come on back up. So now we can actually create our ridge plot. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, like most other things, we're going to call in ggplot. We're going to give it uh, the data that we need or the data frame that we're going to be using, which is my data, and then inside of our AES. We're going to give it uh, our X and our Y. So our Y is going to be month because we want our month along the vertical axis. So Y will be equal to month. X will be equal to temp high three. All right, and then, uh, and then we can go ahead and add in our actual plot type. And this is going to be geome joy and within GeomJoy, we're going to give it a scale, and this is how much is going to overlap. So we'll change this as soon as it's plotted, um, just so you can see what that's like. Um, but for right now, we'll just leave it as, as this. And then we're going to say um, we're going to group it and color it as, or fill it rather, by um, the month, so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, and then we want to, um, because they are going to overlap, we're going to want to give it an alpha or an opacity. And we'll just say 0 0.5, that should be good. And then we'll also um, define line width as one. Okay, so that's good. We're gonna throw in a um, theme classic. I like theme classic a lot. And then we're also going to throw in, um, we're gonna uh, change the We're going to change the legend a bit, so we're going to say guides. Uh, inside guides, we want fill is equal to false, and then we want color equal to false. If you want the legend, you can keep these in, um, but I don't really want the legend. It's a little messy. And then we can add in some other things for theme. Um, we can say axis, title, um, and then we can call in the element text. And we can do, you know, what we like to do. We can say color is equal to um, 
black face is equal to bold font size will be equal to we'll say uh, 25 right then we can do the same thing we can say axis uh, text and we can call an element text again and we can say you know color black uh, size 18 and we uh, we can change a lot of this stuff but for right now let's um let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like so we'll pull this over all right let's go ahead and run our plot and there we have it okay so you can see you know we got our, our month here on the y-axis we've got our temperature here on the uh, x-axis and you can see maybe as you would have guessed um, you've got lower temperatures through the winter months, especially um, here in January, December, November. Um, October is a little bit more spread out, and then you can see uh, down here in Alabama, basically, uh, you know, May through September, it gets warm and it stays warm. So uh, that's what you can see. I'll kind of zoom it here in case you can't really see it uh, because of the video. So here's all these things here. And of course, you would go through and change. Uh, you know, you'd come in here and you would say X label would be, um, you know, uh, high temp at 12 p.m. And that would be in degrees Fahrenheit. And then you could, uh, well, the Y label is already what we want it to be. So we'll run that. Just change that X axis label. And there you have it. All right. That's uh, just how you make a basic ridge line plot. All right, I hope you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. You can also find me on Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of this uh, code, not this particular code, but I've got another one for Ridgeline Plots, are up on GitHub. The code that I use to scrape this, it's a Python script. That's up on GitHub as well. I'll link to that below. Um, yeah, and of course, you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.